Hello everyone, it's Chris Clark with DiscGolf.Law. Today, there are dozens of companies producing disc golf baskets. Some have more change, wider bands, deeper trays, but all baskets used for sanctioned events must meet specific PDGA technical standards. For the most part, they all look a lot like the original Target invented by Ed Hedrick back in the 1970s. But a legal battle between the two most prominent companies in disc golf at the time nearly left us with baskets like this. In 1977, the inventor of modern disc golf and president of DGA, Ed Hedrick, obtained a United States patent for his invention of the disc pole hole. Over the next two decades, DGA became the dominant manufacturer of disc golf targets. More than three quarters of the disc golf courses in the United States used DGA's baskets. As many of you likely know, patents are a form of intellectual property protection that allows the patent holder to exclude others from selling or offering for sale a particular invention or product that contains a particular feature of that invention. Meanwhile, a new company was starting to make waves in the sport. The World Frisbee Distance Champion, Dave Dunapace, founded Champion Discs and included the first disc designed specifically for disc golf, the Eagle. So let's fast forward to the early 90s. Disc golf is blossoming into a legitimate, albeit still very much a niche sport. Innova is setting the standard for technological innovation in the sport. And DGA is enjoying a near monopoly on basket production. However, patents don't last forever. The typical term of a United States utility patent is 20 years from the date of filing. In 1994, DGA's poll hole lost its patent protection. Less than a year later, Innova began marketing the Disc Catcher Pro, a championship quality disc golf target with many similar features to the pole hole, most significantly the parabolic chain design. To maintain its dominant position in the basket market, DGA sued Innova, alleging trademark and trade dress infringement under Section 43A of the Lanham Act. The Lanham Act is a federal statute primarily known as the United States Trademark Law Statute. In other words, with no patent protection left, DGA turned to see if they could prevent Innova from making baskets using U.S. federal trademark law. Now, a trademark typically protects brand names and logos used to identify the source of goods and services. So this was a creative strategy on DGA's part. To win the lawsuit, DGA had an uphill battle. DGA would have to prove that first, the parabolic chain design is non-functional. Number two, the design itself is inherently distinctive. And third, there is a likelihood that the public will confuse Innova's Disc Catcher Pro with DGA's baskets. So trademark or trade dress protection extends only to non-functional product features. This is talking about whether the product feature is functional? Does it actually give the product a functional advantage? This concept I've just discussed is called the functionality doctrine, and it prevents trademark law from inhibiting legitimate competition between companies by allowing a producer to 
control a useful product feature. It's not in the public's best interest for one company to be able to monopolize and control a useful feature. That would something that would be useful on other products. So DGA claimed the parabolic chain design was non-functional and therefore it's eligible for trademark protection for four main reasons. First, the original patent never expressly disclosed the functional advantage of the parabolic chain design. The gist of the invention was any energy absorbing structure over a basket. The use of that parabolic design was merely incidental. Second, the parabolic chain design provides no utilitarian advantage to the basket because a parabolic chain makes a hole harder to complete than with a straight chain configuration. They're essentially making the argument that not only is it not functional, it actually makes the basket worse. The third thing DGA had to prove was that utilitarian advantage is not a valid basis for comparing disc golf targets. The devices are used for playing a game and are not intended to have a useful function. And fourth, while the patent described more than one function performed by the disc golf hole device, Ed Hedricks stated on record that, quote, the function of a disc golf hole device is merely to objectively indicate that a hole has been completed. Unfortunately for Ed, the court was not persuaded by these arguments. The court ruled that it doesn't matter whether a parabolic chain configuration is more or or less effective than a straight one. A product only needs to have some utilitarian advantage to be considered functional. And the chains are specifically designed to absorb energy and identify a completed hole. Additionally, the court said it is irrelevant that the device's function is for a game. The issue is not whether a product is functional, but whether this particular shape and form of product is functional. Finally, the court said that Ed Hedrick's statements regarding the function of the pole hole are also irrelevant. A trademark proponent cannot create an issue of material fact regarding a shape's functionality and thus survive summary judgment by contradicting an earlier assertion in an expired utility patent that the same shape is functional. So, the district court granted summary judgment in favor of Enova on the ground that DGA's claimed trademark or trade dress, a parabolic chain design, is functional as a matter of law and therefore is not entitled to trademark protection under the Lanham Act. DGA was not satisfied and did what many litigants do when they get a ruling they don't agree with. They appealed to the United States Court of Appeals in the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit affirmed the district's court's judgment in favor of Innova. In addition to providing some history and context around one of the most significant and meaningful legal battles in the history of disc golf, there are some lessons to be learned from this DGA versus Innova case. First, all businesses should routinely, no less than once a year, do an inventory of their intellectual property. Even small businesses often have valuable inventions or creative works or trade secrets or brands that would benefit from legal protection. Intellectual property is a valuable and powerful asset for companies. And whether you think you might 
sell your business one day and you want to enhance its value or you just want to maintain an advantage in the marketplace over your competitors, I urge you to consider having an experienced intellectual property attorney review and analyze your business for these issues. As our industry and our sport continues to grow, this is the best advice I can give to your disc golf business on how to avoid a potentially costly mistake. Leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to our channel. As always, thanks for watching.